Hello and welcome to IGN's News Games and More, the daily news show live right here on IGN every single day or night or weekend or month, whatever it is and whatever time you're in. I'm Brian Altano. With me is Bob Marshall, Seth Macy, Hello. and Matt Kim. My friends, I don't get to see anymore in person. Um, this is uh, I'm very happy to have you guys here because obviously this is this is probably one of the biggest news days of the year, news wise. I mean, we've all been on the edge of our seat for mm -hmm. what feels like 24 hours now. We're waiting for the biggest news of all time to, to drop and to really to, to reveal the, the secret that's been hiding in this country and, and the world for the longest time now. And that is the panel on the PlayStation 5 controller. Now, I know many of you um, are probably wondering, you know, the PS5 controller, it's so strange. It, you know, it looks like it's wearing, you know, uh, like a, 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 a unisex bikini or um some sort yeah, of tight. That's, what, that's what we're thinking yeah yep, yep yeah and so um one was so many of you are wondering the part down there does it does it come off yeah i was and wondering it, that it turns out it does oh! <laughs> so that's some that's some big news um uh let's see this is a uh, been a very interesting uh news story here we uh just covered the other day about um a website called Plate Station that was making third-party um, sort of like uh, modular, uh, sort of unofficial, very unofficial plates that you could put on the side of your PS5, get them in different colors. Because now a lot of people right off the bat were kind of like, PS5 looks cool or it looks weird, but I want to swap out those, you know, giant white monoliths on the side. Um, so Sony shut that down. But one thing you can do for sure, uh, which I will not be doing because this came in the mail yesterday and I don't want to take it apart yet, is uh, remove this panel right here. Uh, this uh, as can be seen in a video from John Glasscock on YouTube. The lower black plating that covers the thumbsticks on the DualSense can be snapped out and reapplied with relative ease uh, with, quotes, pretty much no tools required. Um, before we get into exactly uh, how he did that, um, why do you guys think that that's even a thing and do you think that's something that sony wants you to do seth let's start with you uh i think it's probably for cleaning it so it doesn't get all you know how like after about seven years your controller gets real real gunky and gross and there's nothing you can do about it other than just <laughs> throw it away or give it to your kids or your little yeah. brother uh, i think that's probably what sony was like hey we can make this cleanable and then you know everyone else is like well i'll be able to get custom face plates like i'll be able to get you know like this sublime 40 ounces to freedom cover <laughs> my college dorm on it or like a bob marley oh yeah that'll that'll never get gunky <laughs> oh, oh yeah i like the like the pink floyd like record covers on like the naked ladies yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah. it's actually a stash it is a stash so yeah. so matt what do you think do you think this is um something that people can use to hide to hide uh secret stuff inside that yeah doesn't have little... to be that secret anymore depending on how many states decided Shut it shouldn't guys. be as of last night <laughs> uh, i don't i don't know what seth is implying but yeah i think it's totally fun that you can write little messages to your friends roll them up in tiny little like fortune oh, cookie like size paper and just slide them in and then share your controller with a buddy <laughs> for no uh I don't want to be a buzzkill, but I'm pretty sure that's like just a manufacturing like shortcut, right? Instead of just printing out like a single unified body, they're like, oh, we can get a two tone controller by just slapping this plastic little thing on top of it. So pretty sure that's the reason. I I mean, like it's so small, right? Like there's no way. I okay, so I think customizable face plates might be a thing Sony is actually interested in. I don't think customizable like controller plates are a thing Sony's looking into only because of, like <laughs> imagine like you know trying to retail like what like this kind of like this size piece to people for 20 bucks like I wouldn't do it that sounds right you know but Bob our article says uh that uh it's not clear if removing the plate could void any warranty of the controller and so we don't currently recommend trying it yourself will you try it yourself <laughs> I think I mean I think I kind of have to now. You kind of have to now, right? Just to see. I mean, it, it's basically a dare. It's a challenge. The guy said, "Hey, you can pretty much take this off without any problems," and that just made me wonder, like, like can I? Um, yeah, right. <laughs> I get. I guess this is why uh, you buy two controllers: one to disassemble and destroy, um, with the hopes that you can put it back together, and the other one to actually use. Hey, we can't Wait, all be you... Mr. Teardown or whatever he goes by. Yeah, right. Like the Will It Blend guy, where he just mm -hmm. buys an Xbox and throws it in the blender. <laughs> well, you can't. I, this I don't recommend this, but this is like the anarchist in me is saying you could take it off and look inside, and if it doesn't work again, put it back in the box, 
send it back to Sony and be like, this is what happened. I have no idea. What's so strange? What a, what a freak occurrence. <laughs> it just um, came off. I was just playing just Miles Morales and it just popped off right in my hand. <laughs> But while I have you, are you guys going to sell other ones maybe with like Sublime <laughs> or like the Rolling Stones or the Jerry Bears? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I. Talking about I specifically <laughs> like the John Belushi wearing college the college shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I first heard about that, I was like, okay, it's got to be this big thing in the front, the big touchpad. You'll be able to snap that off, and because that's you know that's the big. I don't, that's like the bumper, right? Like that's where you really want to get the message. Um, but this down here just does, doesn't seem like there's a lot to work with there. Um, I also think it's crazy that they would make any of this stuff sort of modular uh, or, or even make it in a way where you could buy or customize the sides or pieces of it yourself because there's such a there's such a market for you know people double and triple quadruple dipping on controllers and mm -hmm. special edition consoles. And I, like, I have to imagine, like, I, I know a bunch of people just sort of anecdotally at IGN, Jonathan Dornbush, uh, I'll just call him out, who <laughs> went through, yeah, put him on blast, who went through multiple PS4s and PS4 Pros because every time they would announce a new cool looking one, he'd be like, I got to get it and then get rid of the old one. So like, how do you guys feel about that? Like, I, is do you think that they'll actually give us that option to, to sw swap in and out a lot? I agree. Yeah. yeah, you might be right. Like they make so much money putting out like a special Spider-Man PS4 or a Death Stranding PS4. Like, well, being able to customize a, a your base PS4 for thirty or forty bucks with uh, different base plates when they could sell you another five hundred dollar console that's special edition. Like, get out of here. You know, we're forty people. bucks. Yeah, forty bucks. I mean, that's that's a pretty good deal if you think about it. With swappable faceplates, uh, there's never been uh, a console like the Xbox 360 where I looked at somebody's faceplate and I was like, wow, that looks really cool. Instead, it was mm -hmm. like, dude, that, like, oh, I guess you like smoking weed because your Xbox 360 <laughs> is. <laughs> doesn't look like flowers, or, uh, well, so the, the 360 did launch with that option, but um, it, was, it was so weird because it was just this sort of thin vertical strip you could put in the front mm -hmm. that was, you know, obfuscated by uh, giant holes and yeah. one of those holes sometimes you know portrayed a red ring of death mm -hmm. like um so that was it was sort of brought all the attention to any any sort of like buttons or placement but on the ps5 you have these like huge white canvases on the side you know yeah you can I use think... them for wings on an airplane if you're in a pinch <laughs> i think historically just based on the fact that they're not around is the faceplates just don't do well remember the new 3ds the small one those had like yes. interchangeable faceplates and they just discontinued selling that like now you can only get the new big 3ds and stuff like that and that didn't have the faceplate stuff so maybe they maybe despite how cool they seem in concept people just don't buy them well yeah. cou counterpoint to that weirdly on ign social media over the past like week anything anytime we mentioned the face plates like it blew up that made me think like there's actually like some demand here like people were very excited about it like across facebook instagram twitter anytime that we brought up the face plates it was like our one of our biggest stories of the day so i do think i i mean i do think that there is something there maybe like you know i think here's the thing that i i think people are maybe thinking about right now is for those who have, for the majority of everybody who has not gotten an, a PS5 before launch date, I think you see those pictures, you see how big it is. You have no idea how it's actually going to end up fitting into your like entertainment center or like your, it might, I think people are worried like this might look ugly. This might look disruptive. Most of my, <laughs> most of my electronics are like black. Like my like cable right. box is black. Like my like Wi-Fi router is black. And now I'm just going to have this like giant massive white thing. Like, is there something I can do to fix that? I mean, maybe the fix is just as simple as like, hey, he has like PlayStation, Sony, like maybe consider like releasing a black one and that could fix the problem maybe. I don't know. Right. No, I, I'm totally with you on that. Um, like I, I think Sony specifically said or like they outright said uh, in interviews, like we want this to be sort of like a conversation piece when people come over and they walk in and they see this, you know, obelisk yeah. standing in your home. Holy cow. Which, yeah. <laughs> it's so which is big. Like, I mean... <laughs> I've had, I'll tell you who I've had over in the last eight months, and it's uh, a guy from Sonic Internet and Movers. <laughs> like, and so, like, I mean, they're not really super high on my list. I, you know, it's nice to impress people, but they're not like, 
it's this is this is a very different situation where you just have like foot traffic going through your apartment at all time or your home right <laughs> it's just like museum tours just oh this is the ps5 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um <laughs> what are you gonna say no i it's just a joke it was like that's why i'm not gonna put my ps5 in my entertainment center i'm gonna put it on top of my coffee table where it could you know like a like a coffee table book, you know? I don't know. I was, I was workshopping it in my brain, but uh. Oh, oh no! You yeah. stuck it. Thanks. Put man. little fold-out legs on it, and then you could use it as a coffee table, like a what if, if, coffee table book. If you got like custom, if you got customized panels that looked like you know, like the the Odyssey or something like no, that. No, uh, yeah, like a big the Illustrated Odyssey or uh, yeah. or uh, twenty-five most beautiful hotels in the room. <laughs> <laughs> people come over and you're like oh you notice i'm a reader yes this is this is i love books <laughs> yeah just just don't touch it just don't touch it but yes i am a reader just don't go near it <laughs> oh man that's that's awesome um so one thing we do know is that after the uh os is installed i believe the playstation 5 has do you guys know it's something like is it 630 gigs or something like that yeah it's something... around 700 yeah right which um which sucks. Yeah. I'll just I'll come out and say that. That sucks. <laughs> um, and the reason that sucks is because uh, we had heard going into this generation or next generation that uh, you know people would sort of be mindful of, of game sizes. No, they're not. That's not happening. Uh, we found out today that Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, just a whole bunch of words uh -huh. that have joined forces uh, to assault your senses, um, will be uh, 100 gigs on uh, PS4 and Xbox One. You can preload that beginning November 5th. That's tomorrow. Uh, hey. So yeah, PS4, 95 gigs. PS5, 133 gigs. Xbox One, yeah. 93 gigs. Xbox Series X or S, 136 gigs. And PC, 125 uh, with full game on Ultra Graphics, mm -hmm. which is just crazy. That's 82 for the full game, 35 gigs for multiplayer. Um, and these, the thing about these file sizes is this is how, this is where it is on day one. Right, these games historically yeah. get tons of map packs and DLC and added modes and stuff like that, and they get they get sort of heavier and heavier, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I guess my question for you guys is um, how how are you planning on rectifying this on your next gen consoles? Are you going to, as Reggie Fizeme used to say in the Nintendo Wii, move stuff around the fridge, aka you know throw out stuff that you won't be eating for a while, or? Uh, <laughs> Are you going to buy backup hard drives? Like, what's the plan here? Bob, let's start with you. Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like, when I downloaded Warzone for my uh, PS4, I was just, I had not read ahead and I was just not prepared. And I deleted lots and lots of stuff and regretted it because I didn't end up playing Warzone that much afterward. And I think the, I think the biggest casualty was the Crash Bandicoot trilogy, which I immediately re downloaded after all that. I think, I, I mean, in, tr in truth, like, I, it, it's like it's like one of those things like does it does it if I have friends who aren't playing this game does it make sense to download it if it's just not something I'm gonna end up using because that is so much space especially like on a new console where I you know things are dropping right. um, it's it's way easier to download something now as versus going to the store um, especially like in pandemic times like I mm -hmm. think maybe the I, I mean for me personally maybe I might just wait and kind of see who. who it, which of who of my friends actually downloaded downloads it first, and then if I actually end up having some sort of FOMO, then maybe I'll change my mind from there. That's a that's actually a really good plan because it's like it's I I've noticed with a lot of these things like you you hold on to them because there's the chance that you'll play them, which is that they're very sort of mild hoarder mentality that I think a lot of us uh, <laughs> have digitally these days. Um, but also like it's you know we're in a situation where these things are starting to eat up like uh you know a fourth or a fifth of your entire hard drive space and on the xbox series x there's that proprietary sort of uh little you know stick that you can plug into the back of your system which will allow you to load games instantly or you can plug in an external hard drive which basically just acts as a storage unit and you can bring things over and so you'll be doing a lot of sort of like flipping back and forth um matt what's your plan here like are you are you are you going to basically just like bounce around the insides of your console and delete stuff when you don't need it? Uh, do you even play Call of Duty games? Because I, I don't, and this is sort of like a relief for me. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's like sort of like look. It's like looking at the Cheesecake Factory calories and being like, I don't eat there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I already lived that life. I that's that's my go-to move is whenever I need space. Like 
I think it's kind of crazy how we went from like 2018 when people were like, oh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be over 100 gigs. And people were like, oh, my God, right? That's a lot. And now it's just like accepted that a bunch of AAA games are now going to be over 100 gigs. Like that's right. no longer a thing people are surprised about. But like it was insane. In 2018, that was like a whole new cycle. The fact that Red Dead Redemption 2 was so big. Right. And now uh, now, you know, we're just going to have to live with the reality where we're going to have eight games on our PS5 and seven games on our xbox series x <laughs> i uh i downloaded red dead on my ps4 pro and i was like this looks pretty good but not good enough i don't know mm -hmm. what i what kind of mood i was in and then i bought it for the xbox one x and downloaded it there and i got an email from comcast who's thankfully um we've parted ways and i broke up with them um nice. but they sent me an email and they're like hey going over that data cap we're coming to get you <laughs> <laughs> and, like that was totally normal back then and that's that's a thing for a lot of people these days you know like and it's it's also like you know a lot of us live in major cities and we're on high-speed internet or you're seth who lives in maine i don't even know and i got high-speed internet all right um but for a lot of people it's this plumbing. is something that they, be, they have to be conscious of right <laughs> like this is this is a significant amount of data mm -hmm. being used up on these systems and these systems are shipping with enough space to fit just a handful of these games I think we're going to run into this problem like very, very quickly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going 4K now and there's mm -hmm. so much information in a 4K image, you know, like uh, uh, HD image is 1920 by 1080 and a, a 4K is, you know, I should have prepared. So I wouldn't sound like it. it's 4K. <laughs> it's it's a lot. It's so many more pixels that they have to do in everything. Every texture, every every piece of graphic in the video game now is uh four times as big so yep. this especially, is especially like the call of duty games are like there's so much just just crap all over the ground <laughs> like yeah. it's just like oh well, I mean, the dinner, there's holes in the walls like it's a mess in every call of duty game. and then you know every gun has like 30 skins that you have mm -hmm. to earn by the way i love call jerry of duty. bears sublime you got jerry bears in there <laughs> you got all the good stuff all the skins I, you want they've done they've done like weed skins for call of duty oh, yeah. guns though right not I, officially, but yeah, no. Uh, officially, <laughs> last year I played like I did the whole thing where because I can't even remember now what the gun was. Is like Damascus steel, right? Where you had to win every, and then you know, and I topped it out and mm -hmm. I, I geeked but, yeah. out pretty hard for a skin. But that skin is now four times larger in <laughs> glorious 4K. But I'll probably just play on PC anyway. And if I have trouble, I got so much storage on this this bad boy over here mm -hmm. it's called well, the uh the california dreaming gun skin right oh yeah. <laughs> oh oh because all the leaves are brown yeah, yeah. got it uh activision says players on both pc and console can choose to uninstall specific game mode packs such as campaign or zombies to reduce the overall size that makes sense like i actually like that part of it you can go in crush the campaign in a few hours and then get rid of it mm -hmm. also 20 was 2018 the, what was it last year or the year before where they just didn't have a campaign it that was the year was... before. It was uh, Black yeah. Ops 4. Uh, and everybody was like, just you wait. This is going to affect sales. And it just didn't. No, no, it did not. And then last year they brought it back and everyone was excited. I was excited. And I never played the campaign once. I played like <laughs> several hundred hours of the multiplayer. With my I think friends, it's so. it's like backwards compabulity where people are like, you guys better oh. put that in there. And yeah, then they, yeah, yeah. it's there and you're like, oh, I'm not going to use it. You're like, I you don't want to play Mech Warrior for my Xbox. Like, when am I ever going <laughs> to? Yeah, Call of Duty is gonna it's gonna make money no matter what they do. It's fine. Uh, speaking of making money, Pokemon Go, the game where you travel around the world with real friends outside to catch Pokemon, has had its most lucrative year in history. It made a billion dollars in 2020 uh, in a year where we're all trapped inside. Uh, this is insane. Matt, do you can you can you uh, tee us up on the story? Do you know about this one? Yeah, okay. Uh, so Pokemon Go, already a massively popular game that people still play, despite uh, what our comment sections will have you believe. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Pokemon Go is already, already super popular, but you know when COVID hit, you can't do the main thing of Pokemon Go, which is go outside and do all the outdoor features. And so they added a bunch of these sort of like, hey, play safely at home kind of features. And I, I was kind of disappointed with them but base but it meant things like um you get more pokemon will appear by you like will be attracted to you instead of you having to go find them out uh you can uh remotely do gym battles and raids instead of having to go to a physical gym battle or raid location with using special passes 
Uh, and all this stuff seems to have worked because they're all little little small microtransactions, right? So if you want to do a raid but you can't leave the house, you buy a little like 99 cent raid pass that you go out to, and all those uh, little bits and bobs translate into a billion dollars. That's so insane to me. I mean, it completely makes sense that they converted the game. Like, I actually really appreciate that. It's, it, I mean, we've we've all sort of seen anecdotally and and uh, honestly publicly that like video game. Uh, you know, play usage is up like crazy this year. It's one of the sort of like most, you know, consistently successful mediums. Mm-hmm. Um, it hasn't been entirely, you know, uh, stalled by the epidemic in the same way that, you know, a movie and television production has. Uh, it seems a lot of game studios are able to not only work on games, but complete games and ship them from home. Um, but we're, we're seeing that happen with so many different games this year. Uh, and so I, I, I find that so interesting that, that, that this game was able to pivot into something that you can do in a small apartment. And like mm-hmm. the weird thing is a lot of the people I know who are really hooked uh, on this game live in very small apartments and are definitely still pacing around in circles trying to catch Pokemon. <laughs> uh, I I definitely played more Pokemon Go during the quarantine because they took out the <laughs> thing that I didn't want to do, which was go outside. So, <laughs> well, um, no, uh, they are trying to like phase going outside and doing activities again back into the game. I imagine they have to. Otherwise, like, if people get stuck in this routine, maybe Pokemon Go will never... Like, they want you to go outside. That's Niantic's whole thing. Like, their vision is these AR games where where you go outside and go visit real-life real, lo- real life locations. And so, just starting to introduce some of that back into the game. They're phasing out some of the more, like, stay-at-home stuff out of it. But uh, for the most part, yeah, I was really surprised because Pokemon Go absolutely seemed like the one game that might suffer from COVID, whereas right. every other game benefits yeah. from COVID because people stay at home. But like Pokemon Go by its like nature makes it vulnerable to it, but they pivoted really quickly and really smartly. And so they were able to turn their existing success into another big one. And Matt, just because just because I'm interested, um, I mean, do you, so you said that they've started uh, phasing real life back into the game. Um, what does that, what does that look like? I mean, I'm, I haven't played Pokemon Go since like the big, the peak of it all. So I'm, I, you know, I mean, I'm interested in kind of like what that looks like as they slowly phase that back in. And also like, you know, how do they do, how do you think they make the decision to do so responsibly at Niantic? Like, you know, do they do it regionally or is it just like, okay, the whole game is like this now? Uh, Yeah. I mean, the sad reality is like America is, I think either the second or third most popular location for Pokemon go, but the most popular places are still, I think it's Japan for sure. And it's either Germany or us at number two. Right. Mm -hmm. But the sad reality is like Japan and Germany are doing better than we are in terms of COVID, you know, like the fact that they might be able to, to reintroduce those like live features means maybe that it works better in a safer country than ours, you know, Mm -hmm. but uh, but that's something that's a good question. We'll have to look at like absolutely something that we can look into uh, and ask about. But uh, I mean, I think as the pandemic continues, like I don't know about you, but I've had to start going out for more errands and stuff as like stores have opened and things like that. And right. so it's mm-hmm. uh, it's something that, you know, that's sort of it, it follows my own real life trend. Right. Like I am also like safely trying to go back outside. And at the same time, Pokemon go is also reintroducing these features of where people go outside. So I think it's a, a convenient one-to-one, you know, um, Ash in the YouTube chat, which is a perfect name for somebody to chime in on this story, uh, says remote rating has brought waves of money in for Niantic. $50 a month is about average, which is, Crazy. I mean, if you think about it, like per player, yeah. um, people spending that kind of money. But I honestly like, I, like, I'm, I'm, I don't usually go, hey, go spend money on a bunch of like sort of incremental charges, microtransactions, stuff like that. But this is a year where like I think a lot of people are not really spending money on frivolous nonsense in the same way they used to. You're not really going out to bars and restaurants or traveling or anything like that. Um, obviously, um, money is tighter for a lot of people who've been you know, directly affected by this pandemic. But to get more enjoyment out of a game that you really love for hours and hours and hours a day uh, without having to like invest in a whole new console or ecosystem or, or, or uh, you know, a single player game that you're going to run out of steam on in a, in a few hours. Um, I think it's really smart. Uh, it's it's interesting to note, Bobby, you're talking about you hadn't played the, uh, the game since it um, first came out. Uh, Pokemon Go made, what is it, 860 or $832 million in its first year. And so I think like if you asked anybody on earth 
about Pokemon Go. They would tell you anecdotally about what it was like to be there that first year. It took over the planet. Oh, it, it was so beautiful. It was incredible. Uh, you couldn't walk past any like sort of public restaurant or uh, business or anything without seeing like a chalkboard sign outside being like, "Hey, Charizard's in there, getting drunk. Like, come on in." <laughs> um, and so, like, I. I think for, for those of us who played for a bit and then stopped playing or didn't play at all, uh, we all like it's insurmountable and insane to us that we would look at this and be like, oh, you you guys are doing better now than you were doing back then. Because it feels like anecdotally, you don't hear about it as often anymore, but they're they're crushing they're crushing it out there. I mean, it's, it's the, I mean, it's the people that do play it. Like those are, you know, all the people who have multiple cell phones and when you ask them, you know, why, and they're like, oh, well, it's not for work. It's for specifically Pokemon purposes. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it, it is, it is crazy. I think like, you know, for how many of us, it, it, when Pokemon Go came out, it was just like, this is really cool and this is really unique. And then once it got cold outside, it was sort of like, eh, you know, whatever. And then you have like these people who just never left. And it feels like, it feels like those people, like the people who never left, like love it like more dearly than like almost any, any like game fandom that I've like seen. And it's like really cool that like, it's always very cool like encountering friends in the wild where you're like, oh, I have a, you know, here's my random friend who likes Pokemon Go. Oh, here's another friend of mine who likes Pokemon Go. Let's introduce them. And when you do, it's just like, oh my God, what of us? Like you, it's like just yeah. finding like this <laughs> great like, member of this community and they're so excited and they're so stoked and there's like show you know like come going through their phones showing off everything they have I'm like oh oh and i'm like oh i wish i had i mean i guess i wish i had that back maybe i should maybe i maybe this you can have it back that I, you can have it maybe back. the fact that they made a billion dollars that they're successful at capitalism phone. is the uh, thing that brings me back <laughs> uh marto paskalev on youtube says we were closest to world peace during those first it's few weeks so of true. Yes. Yeah, it's so true it's such, I think I think honestly that's probably what what 2020 needs is a little more of that. Um, yeah, I mean, the bunch of people sort of chiming in, being like, "Hey, we're, you know, I'm not really spending money on anything anymore." Like we said, uh, Pokemon Go has ranked as the number three mobile game by global player spending outside of uh, third party stores such as those in China. It sits behind only PUBG Mobile and Honor of Kings. So, yeah, yeah that's a big top three. So, uh, yeah, shout out to people playing Pokemon Go. I'm I'm glad it's making you happy. I'm glad. Uh, that you're still finding something to do with it, even though it's, you know, slightly less social than it was in 2016, but you know, so is everything else this year. Um, I have no way to transition it into the next story. Cause I think this is one of the most bizarre things we've ever reported on here at IGN, but we'll do it. Um, this is a headline. Los Angeles Dodgers, Cody Bellinger will cameo in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, Cody Bellinger, who is an outfielder for the Dodgers, who they just won the world series. Uh, is playing a character in the upcoming Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a Viking game, um, who basically is a, he's like a, his name is Ada Slugason. <laughs> oh, God. You know, like yeah. if a child had to name a baseball player. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he he did voice acting, mocap, and face modeling for this character. And his character is described as a Dane with a knack for hitting rocks. Very, oh. very far. Uh, in his reveal, he's shown swinging his spike club uh, like a baseball bat and showing off his slugging skills to the main uh, character in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And he says, you can't fight me, but Otta Slugison would win if there were fighting. I can't get over that name. <laughs> I don't, yeah, Otta Slugison is just... <laughs> it has just little more effort than, like, Ball Pitcherson, you know, you're <laughs> <in the basement. laughs> like they're, they're like there's like this amount of separation between the two in terms of creativity. Uh, um, yeah, it's. I, what were you gonna say, Bob? I, I, oh, I'm, I'm, because I'm out of words. It's just, <laughs> just, just, just the whole video is just like, yeah, what, like, like Matt said, like it's just if you watch the mocap video, it's literally just. Cody Bellinger walking around in a baseball uniform, swinging a bat, like a baseball bat. And then it's just yeah. like, as you can see, this guy has a club too. And it's just like, oh, <laughs> and then, and then it's like a whole other, like two minutes of that. Just like, okay. That, like, yeah, we get it. We get it. We get it. We get it. They gave he's him a baseball uh, player and he's got a bat and this guy's a Viking and he's got a club. We get and it. And they get, it's, it's like, it's so, it's, so I feel like there's, there was, there was, there's, there's no like smart way to do this, right? But there was, there's, it, this feels a little on the nose. Like they're like, okay, so uh, the Vikings use like war paint and face paint and stuff like that. So we'll give them some, but we're just going to give them like those lines mm -hmm. that they have, 
like to stop the sun or look cool. I don't know enough about sports or health to yeah. answer that one. And then like they're like, well, Vikings also use like club shaped objects, so we'll give him one of those. And they're then they just have him standing there. He looks like like a like a dude from the Warriors or like yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he's got like he's got like kind of a modern haircut too. That's like the uh, other thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly it like it's, and he drives a ford f-150 which is <laughs> yeah. really weird this is it was very like like how do you do fellow kids i guess mm. like it's just like i understand this is this is like basically a, a game about like you know time traveling in a in a you know electric sarcophagus and bouncing through your uncle's memories to change the past and and or collect feathers but um <laughs> i i I, I don't know who asked for this. You know, like, it, it just seems like such a weird fit. I, I mean, either Ubisoft has a really big baseball fan or he's a really <laughs> big Ubisoft fan. It had, it, there's yeah. no way people ask for this, right? It's like one or the other where someone at Ubisoft who's like a huge Dodgers fan is like, you know who I want in my up upcoming game? It's my favorite outfielder. That <laughs> seems like the cool thing to do is like put somebody who's like a fan, like a former IGN uh, host, Alana Pierce, is in Cyberpunk. True. And right. There's like I, I can't. I'm blanking on it, but I, it's like if you're like a fan now, you're just like, hey, you're kind of cool. Why don't you be in our game? It's like, mm -hmm. hell yeah! Like put me in a game. Put me in Mario. I'll be jumping yeah. on Goombas. Yeah, I, I like I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with all that stuff. Like I feel like you know, it's, it is a little odd to sort of like put influencers in games, but it's 2020. It happens. But this feels like the way like the Ninja Turtles order pizza. You know, like it's, like it's, 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 it's like, it's like blueberries ice cream and sardines like it's a bunch of stuff that doesn't necessarily uh, fit in any meaningful way um but that some people will eat anyway i like how you asked, sewer. i like how you asked like who asked for this because now i'm actually imagining like a bunch <laughs> of people playing like assassin's creed just being like this would be better if it had more baseball i don't know what it is right but like this is really missing the baseball element that i that i come to video games for specifically this is yeah. that like thousand monkeys at the typewriter thing <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a uh, we'll get new DLC like classic baseball play like Babe Ruth. Mm. Babe, oh, that'd be Bob, great. Robin Ruth and Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> I would like that as like a Don Mattingly with just like the '80s oh. cocaine mustache. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. with the big sideburns, yeah. I mean, Gordon, Mark that. McGuire would be like the easiest layup ever. Just put Mike, Mark McGuire in a Vikings uniform, just like oh yeah. Just, like, the most... Get the Bash. Get Jose Canseco in there too. Get the Bash brothers. For yeah, sure. Oh man. <laughs> Why not? Actually, that, I mean, that sounds like the name of two Vikings, right? I, I feel like if I had this power to be like, hey, let's get a little, let's get a little sports in my Assassin's Creed, right? I would just maybe because I'm uncreative, but I would just reach for the low hanging fruit and just bring the entire rosters of the Vikings, the football team, oh. into the game. There you go. Uh, yeah, no, that's it, actually that's actually I really like that a lot. I mean, if you put a if you put a modern Viking football player, that's the Raiders. That's, yeah, there's a there's like a there's a vague bridge there that you yeah. can connect in your brain. Um, Yash KS on YouTube says Shaq would have been a person celebrity to turn into a Viking. <laughs> I yeah. agree. Just, I just having a seven Shaq. foot tall the Shaq attack, and then it's just a special move. Yeah, he says having a seven foot tall Shaq as a Viking would have been pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I'm into that. I'm. I'll tell you, like Yash, that makes a lot more sense than than what they did. <laughs> um one last quick story for today and then i'll let you all get back to doom scrolling and staring at your televisions in horror or hope um marvel's wandavision actor says it's a full-on action movie mixed with sitcoms all right. somebody's on a press tour <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, the Disney Plus series is currently on target for its 2020 release. This looks honestly like um, I, you guys have seen trailers for the show, right? Like yeah. it, this looks bizarrely fascinating and interesting. And I'm kind oh of, yeah, I'm uh, way into it. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait for this. Uh, and the fact that it's an action movie mixed with a sitcom. I mean, it's a little bit from column A, a little bit mm -hmm. from column B, a little bit <laughs> Viking, a little bit baseball player. Um, I mean, like, um, with, 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 Wanda, with Wanda and Vision, oh, sorry, go ahead, Matt. No, I, it's just because, like, the Wanda Vision show looked like it was going to borrow a lot from uh, Tom King's Vision comic run, which was, like, which awesome, super good. But also, I wouldn't describe that as, like, an action comic series. You know, it was, like, a 12-issue, more like a psychological 
almost a horror, but it was kind of, it was like a really, I don't know. I, I wouldn't classify it as action. And so the fact that they're saying that WandaVision is going to be a little more action-y is a little, little bit of a bummer, but I'm still looking forward to it because it's, I mean, all the trailers still look super cool, but. I mean, it's supposed to, supposedly it's House of M, mm-hmm. which if that comes true would be, and with House of M being perhaps the thing that could uh, bring the X-Men into the Marvel universe. I mean, I feel like no matter what, that's like must see TV. I I was not when I when WandaVision was first announced. Honestly, I was like of like the MCU characters that have been in like the Marvel movies so far. It's I wasn't that excited until I saw the first trailer, and then it was like, oh, this is absolutely bizarre and insane. And if this is like if it if the show is at all like lives up to the absolutely like crazy trailers, uh, I'm in. Like I I want something. I want something on like. I mean, your other big series on Disney Plus right now is like The Mandalorian, which is just like slow, steady, maybe Yoda here and there, but like pretty, you know, pretty, like very like atmosphere, you know, ambiance. Like I want something that is just going to surprise me every single episode. And mm-hmm. from the trailers, this looks like that could be that thing. I'm really hoping it is. Yeah, it's uh, I, I remember reading that it, this is a show that's going to basically shift dramatically through different genres as it evolves. And I'm really into that. Um do we know it's it's not going to stay black and white the entire time, right? Uh, no, like, that was yeah. just yeah, that was like their yeah. homage to "I Love Lucy" or whatever. Yeah, because uh, it's Geo Fu on YouTube says it's black and white, so that's a no for me. Just, what? You know, just <laughs> disregarding decades of classic cinema. Um, I will say I, I watched Nosferatu like the OG version like two weeks ago, and that movie holds up. Um, but yeah, no. So uh, rest assured, they will um, add color into the show eventually it will start out as black and white though it looks um, like it had a, a brady bunch montage like a brady mm-hmm. bunch homage in there somewhere too mm-hmm. Judd yeah. almighty on twitter says of course wandavision was going to be based around action duh what were people thinking lol <laughs> <laughs> you know, even right. the two characters though like i don't necessarily think of you know vision and and scarlet witch as the two most actiony characters in the mcu but you know it's fine i'm down for it i'm hey I like Disney Plus, and uh, if there's more shows, they'll uh, make my subscription price worth it. I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I mean, there's that meme that goes around every now and then. It's just like, you know, what what Disney uh, thinks I'm paying for seventy dollars a year for, and it's like the Disney uh, Plus logo, and it says like what I'm actually playing paying for. Uh, it's just the Mandalorian logo yeah. <laughs> in the Disney Plus font. Um, I pay seven dollars a month to watch any Simpsons episode I want. So that's um, true. That. That is very true. Every Disney Channel original movie, too. I don't know about you guys, but as soon as I got it, <laughs> fired up, fired up some Brink, some Luck of the Irish, some of the, you know, some of the, some of the classics. Um, and it's, uh, that's definitely paid off. Holes. Holes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love holes? They have to dig holes. It's crazy. Why would they make those kids do that? Mm-hmm. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we've dug a hole and it's lasted about 38 minutes and we're going to crawl out of it now and get back to the rest of our lives. Uh, thank you so much for watching and taking a break from the madness that is the reality of the world, um, which we did our best to not comment on in any meaningful capacity because this is an apolitical website by design. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you to all my friends for joining me today. Uh, you guys were great, and this was a blast. And we will see you right back here tomorrow with more news, games, and more.